Hey, everybody, and welcome into a new video episode of the Eye on the Tigers video podcast. I'm Ben Fredrickson alongside Dave Matter, and we're sponsored by Closets by Design of St. Louis. For a limited time, you can get 40% off any order of $1,000 or more or 30% off any order of $700 or more. On top of that, get an additional 15% off any complete order system. And remember, you get free insulation for any complete unit order of 500 or more. Call 1-800-BY-DESIGN to order today. Dave, if the college football world could order anything by design, it would be college quarterbacks. They're the most important players on the field. They are the player that makes or breaks your, your offense, your season, perhaps your career, and they've never been on the move like we're seeing right now. We knew that the college football transfer portal was a story. That's been a story for years, but now we're seeing a new trend. Um, they're calling it the quarterback shuffle. And as of the past couple months, our, our pal Ross Dellinger at Sports Illustrated reported this, more than 3,000 players have hit the transfer portal through all division levels, the one, two, and three. And a lot of these guys are quarterbacks who were kind of supposed to be the one guys who didn't have to transfer. We didn't see starting quarterbacks leave jobs. Now they're leaving in droves, and it's completely changing college football. And it has a unique tie to Missouri because Missouri could be in on this. Uh, that's a lot to crack. But let's start with this trend. What do you make of so many quarterbacks on the move? It's, it's wild. It really is. Pretty much every high-profile quarterback from this season, other than Bryce Young, the Heisman winner from Alabama, is either going to the NFL or is transferring teams. Uh, it's, it's crazy because of two reasons. It's never been easier to transfer than ever before because of the way the portal works. Teams can't block you from going to other teams. And because you have immediate eligibility at your next school, as long as you haven't transferred yet. We've seen Spencer Rattler transfer from Oklahoma to South Carolina. Bo Nix from Auburn to Oregon, uh, Keaton Slovis from USC to Pittsburgh. So many names. We don't know yet where Missouri's Connor Bazelak will transfer. He announced just a day after Missouri's loss in the bowl game that he's going to be on the move. Um, it's, it's really wild. I mean, it, these change it probably by the time we're done recording this, there'll be a high profile quarterback enter the portal. The, the latest is Caleb Williams coming off the great freshman year at Oklahoma loses his head coach, uh, Lincoln Riley, to USC, and now he's not sure he wants to stick around in Norman. So uh, if you think you've got your, your, your franchise quarterback on your roster, it's probably just for one year because you just never know. And some of these guys are, are switching commitments while they're in the portal before they've even signed anywhere. So it is uh, – people talk about free agency in college football all the time. It is like free agency on steroids with quarterbacks. There's no doubt. So that's that. That to me is the the sequence of events that captures this best. You have Spencer Rattler who loses his job at Oklahoma to Caleb Williams. Um, so Spencer Rattler transfers out, um, goes to to a different school. Now Caleb Williams, who is the reason Spencer Rattler transfers out, he's entering the transfer portal. Meanwhile, you got Dylan Gabriel at UCF who commits to transfer to UCLA, right? But before he can he can actually sign anything that makes that official, he goes, wait, Caleb Williams is leaving Oklahoma. I want to go to Oklahoma. And he announces his plans to transfer to Oklahoma. I wonder if Spencer Rattler would have transferred if he thought that Caleb Williams was going to enter the transfer portal. Who knows? Caleb Williams, meanwhile, at Oklahoma, Dave, he's saying, I might go back to Oklahoma. And now we're seeing the Oklahoma staff, the coach, the Athletic director put a statement out basically trying to re-recruit a quarterback who says he's going to transfer. We're seeing coaches across the country add um, coaches to their staffs that, that specialize in, in, in trying to become the best um, recruiter and also evaluator of guys in the transfer portal. This is something else. How much is name, image, and likeness factoring into this? I, I, don't, I want to be careful here because I, I know a lot of people say, well, this is all because of name, image, likeness. And it's like, well, you can't just blame name, image, likeness, the player's ability to make money off of their, off of their talents. On, you can't blame everything on that. But I do think some of this could be guys seeing what's out there in terms of maybe uh, using different schools to build offers to, to make the most for their bottom line. Yeah, I think that's probably a factor. I don't know if it's the factor. I mean, if you're Caleb Williams, you go to Oklahoma because uh, Lincoln Riley groomed, you know, multiple Heisman Trophy winners and multiple number one picks in the NFL draft. You want to be that next guy. When he moves on to USC, I think it's only logical that you want to step back and consider your options out there. Maybe that ends up being USC to go out 
uh, to the Pac-12 to play for reunite with Lincoln Riley. We don't know. So, you know, I, I, all these players, everybody is making business decisions. The coaches are making business decisions. The ADs are making business decisions. And now the players are finally able to make business decisions for themselves on what's, what's be- in their best interest in the short term and the long term. And at quarterback, we're just seeing it at a level unlike any other position group because those guys are at a, at a, in a spot. They play a position where – only one guy plays for the most part. So um, it, it's it's a domino effect. There's no doubt about it. And then you've got a program like Missouri where, okay, do they add a transfer right now? Do they replace their transfer with another one? Or will that screw up the dynamic and the depth that you have building with both Brady Cook and Tyler Macon and incoming quarterback Sam Horn? Does it throw that off? Is four too many, four scholarship quarterbacks too many for one roster? Or three too many? Um, it's a very delicate situation. So I think if you're a coach like Eli Drinkwitz, you have to be both aggressive and very careful with how you make decisions regarding transfers at that position. You just don't want to, you don't want to wreck what you already have, but you also have to think forward and, and ha- have plans, not necessarily for 2023, but definitely for 2022. No longer can you build quarterback plans four years in advance. Like that, Gary Pinkle made a career out of doing that. That just doesn't work in the current climate. If Caleb Williams wants to come to Missouri, you make it work. Um, oh, yeah. Now, I'll get back to, to reality here. If you're going to take a shot on a transfer quarterback, you better make sure that he's better than what you have in-house. Some of these guys, it's it's hard to say. Some of these guys are transferring because they lost jobs. But I'll, but I'll say this, and you and I dig more into this in a, in a I'm the Tigers podcast audio that people should check out. But Eli Drinkwitz is in a spot here where he's trying to protect the future with Sam Horn. He saw some things he liked out of Brady Cook, but he also has to know in year three, he does not have a lock at QB right now. And and, and incoming freshman quarterback isn't a lock at QB in the SEC until he can get a sure thing quarterback who's healthy and able to run his offense the way he wants to run it. Then there's going to be kind of a ceiling on on what his teams can do as a, as he is the play caller, he's the offensive guru, he's the quarterback's coach. So He should be positioned well in this era, but it's also, as you said, you don't want to go get a guy who isn't better than what you have, and then your depth underneath him crumbles out. So very, very interesting times. And uh, I, I, at times, envy what these college coaches make, Dave, who doesn't, but I don't envy the stress of having to re-recruit your own players and keep them from transferring, especially your most important player during the uh, great quarterback shuffle. Will it calm down in coming seasons? We'll see. Things are, things are a little more uh, tumultuous now than they have been in a long, long time. Will Missouri get in the mix? We'll find out eventually. Keep it locked at stltoday.com for all of your Mizzou coverage. Be sure to check out the On the Tigers podcast as well. For Dave, I'm Ben. We'll talk to you next time.